When Christopher Columbus first discovered the Cayman Islands some 500 years ago, little did he know that he'd stumbled onto what would become one of the most prosperous and beautiful islands in the Caribbean. At that time, the islands were uninhabited and remained so until the first colonists arrived, ex-soldiers from Oliver Cromwell's army and planters from Jamaica. Legend holds that during the 1700s, the Cayman Islands became a favorite haunt of pirates and buccaneers. And until as recently as the 1970s, the people of the Cayman Islands still relied largely on the ocean for their existence. Men traditionally went to sea aboard turtle schooners or merchant ships, while the women remained at home, tending the family and making the rope needed for the men's boats and nets. Today, the Cayman Islands, located in the Northwest Caribbean, are a British Crown colony, with a governor appointed by the Queen and a legislature made up of locally elected representatives. The long-time stability of the Cayman Islands is reflected in the high standard of living and the island's reputation as a global financial center and tourist destination. Though modern office buildings and smart duty-free stores fill the capital city of Georgetown, Everyday life in the rest of the Cayman Islands remains simple and quiet. Although the economy is healthy and the Caymanian people able to enjoy a comfortable lifestyle, success has not spoiled the tranquil beauty of these idyllic islands or the friendliness of the people who call them home. Today, the Kamanian people share their island paradise with approximately one million visitors each year. Many arrive by air, others by cruise ship. And while tourism is an important force behind the strong economy, they are still sensitive to protecting the very thing that attracts their guests, the natural beauty of the flora and fauna of the Cayman Islands. Unique animals such as the blue iguana, endemic to these islands, along with the endangered hawksbill turtle and green sea turtle, are legally protected, and breeding programs are in place to ensure their survival. Perhaps the island's greatest treasure, however, is the prolific marine life of the undersea world, which is jealously protected by marine parks and strict conservation laws. The spectacular coral reefs surrounding the Cayman Islands have established these islands as a world-class destination for the scuba divers and snorkelers who make up a large portion of the island's visitors. However, until recently, non-divers were unable to share in the enjoyment of this beautiful attraction. Then in 1983, Dennis Hurd, a forward-thinking Canadian businessman, founded Atlantis Submarines and by 1985, everyone was offered the opportunity to discover the sensational beauty of Grand Cayman's coral reefs in the air-conditioned comfort of the very first Atlantis submarine. Today, there are 12 Atlantis submarines in operation around the world including Aruba, the Bahamas, Barbados, Hawaii, Guam, Cancun, Mexico, the United States Virgin Islands, and of course, Grand Cayman. Using the latest space age technology, Atlantis submarines are constructed in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Washington State, and are certified by the American Bureau of Shipping. The submarines are fully air conditioned, and because the cabin is kept at sea level pressure, there is no discomfort to your ears during the dive. Constant communications with the surface and complete duplication of all operating systems ensures the absolute safety of passengers and crew. Grand Cayman's Atlantis 11 submarine measures 65 feet in length and 13 feet across. The spacious cabin seats 48 passengers who observe the underwater sights through wide viewing ports along the sides of the vessel. 
During a dive, the submarine is forced below the surface of the water by powerful thrusters located along the top of the submarine. Should the thrusters fail for any reason, the submarine will automatically float right back to the surface. And in light scuba diving, the pressurized submarine can ascend or descend quickly in perfect safety. Situated on the southern edge of the Georgetown Harbor in Grand Cayman, Atlantis headquarters are only a few steps from the cruise ship landing terminal and a short drive from the popular hotels and condominiums of Seven Mile Beach. Technology extends beyond the submarines at Atlantis. After a quick and efficient check-in at the Atlantis ticket counter, the soon-to-be submariners are treated to an interesting commentary and safety briefing during the short cruise to the dive site aboard the passenger tender. Photo opportunities abound from the deck of the boat. Suddenly, with a burst of bubbles, the Atlantis submarine surfaces alongside the boat, and with cameras clicking, the excited passengers get their first close-up look at the vessel. Once inside, they take a seat and eagerly anticipate their underwater journey. Each tour is 50 minutes long and is fully narrated by a knowledgeable guide who identifies and explains the extraordinary underwater sights. While no two dives aboard the Atlantis are ever the same, the variety of marine life seen is always astounding. Turtles are a regular sight. A close look at the turtle will reveal its gender. Female sea turtles have short tails, while males have noticeably longer tails. Colorful reef fish such as the blue chromis, rock beauty, four-eyed butterfly fish, and queen angel fish inhabit the reef and are easily viewed through the portholes of the submarine. Many angelfish, like the grey angelfish and the French angelfish, mate for life and are always encountered in pairs. On our premium tour, the Atlantis Odyssey, divers using ultra-modern underwater scooters join the submarine and perform underwater acrobatics. Sophisticated underwater communications equipment enable the divers to talk to the passengers inside and allow the passengers to ask the divers questions and hear their answers. The abundant and rather aggressive yellowtail snappers eagerly gather round for a handout of squid and other bait. The beautifully patterned parrotfish isn't tempted by the free meal, but is commonly sighted feeding on the hard corals that make up the reef structure. With teeth that are fused together to form a parrot-like beak, the parrotfishes are able to scrape and crush the hard corals, ingesting the algae that the corals harbor and excreting the crushed coral as sand. It's estimated that close to 60% of the fine white sand that you see on Seven Mile Beach is the result of the parrotfish's eating habits. Wide sand channels act like slow-moving rivers and drain the abundance of sand away from the reef. Closer scrutiny of the sand bottom reveals the surprising variety of animals living here. The queen conch is a common sight Colonies of garden eels with their heads bobbing and weaving rise from their burrows. Sand tilefish, hogfish, and goatfish are frequently seen foraging for food in the sand. As passengers on the Atlantis Discovery Tour cruise along the top of the reef drop-off or wall, huge barrel sponges and heads of brain coral provide shelter for many animals, such as the Caribbean spiny lobster and the Nassau grouper. Look closely at the grouper, and you might see that it's visiting a cleaning station. Cleaning stations are special places on the reef, where larger animals allow other fishes, usually juvenile wrasses or small gobies, to pick debris from their bodies. In this symbiotic relationship, both animals benefit. The cleaner fish gets fed, and the host fish is relieved of parasites. At some cleaning stations, the cleaning is done by a small, almost translucent shrimp known as a Peterson's cleaning shrimp. 
Cleaning stations are considered to be indicative of a healthy reef environment and are often encountered on Atlantis dives. While the guides on each tour provide the passengers with intriguing information on the marine life of the Cayman Islands, they also emphasize the importance of marine conservation, a concept that is at the heart of the Atlantis submarine philosophy. While the submarine provides tens of thousands of passengers each year with a glimpse of the underwater world, it does this with virtually no ecological impact. The unique design of the Atlantis submarine makes it one of the most environmentally friendly ways of exploring the sea. The battery-powered propulsion systems are non-polluting and leave no wastes behind. The submarine is highly maneuverable and the experienced pilot ensures that no marine organisms are touched or harmed by the submarine. Atlantis Submarine believes that conservation begins with education. The Living Classroom program introduces children in Atlantis destinations around the world to marine life during a real-life undersea journey. After the voyage, the class is asked to draw pictures or write about their trip. During each dive, the Atlantis submariners are cool and comfortable in the high-tech cabin of the submarine. Natural light streams in through the viewing ports, keeping the roomy interior well lit. Colorful charts illustrating the most common fishes, corals and sponges help passengers identify the marine life, while the informative narrator continually spots exciting items and points them out to the group. Although the Atlantis travels far below the surface, the cabin remains at sea level pressure and there is actually no sensation of going up or down in the water. Digital depth gauges at either end of the submarine constantly monitor your depth. For a completely different look at the underwater world, or as an exciting follow-up to an Atlantis daytime tour, many people choose the Atlantis night dive. Using powerful lights to illuminate the reefs, passengers witness the transformation of the reef at night. The corals, which appear hard and stony during the day, have extended their soft polyps to feed on the minute plankton in the water. Other animals, which are typically secretive by day, like the basket starfish and the black-barred soldier fish, come out from their hiding places after dark. The Atlantis submarine is just one way to explore the incredible marine life of the Cayman Islands. Many visitors to these shores continue to delve into the mysteries of the deep by donning fins, mask and snorkel, and for the more adventurous, even scuba gear. The marine fauna of the Cayman Islands is protected by law, and many areas have been established as marine parks. Strict regulations help keep the marine ecosystem healthy. Divers and snorkelers are not allowed to remove corals, sponges or shells from the sea, dead or alive. Spearfishing is strictly regulated and lobsters and conch can only be taken during specified seasons and must meet size requirements. Many of the popular diving and snorkeling sites such as Devil's Grotto, Trinity Caves and the Wreck of the Oro Verde fall within the marine park zone. Here marine life is protected but diving and snorkeling are allowed, and boats are required to use fixed moorings rather than dropping reef-damaging anchors. The friendly Southern Stingrays at Stingray City are always ready to welcome divers and snorkelers. A truly unique experience, Stingray City has been called the best 12-foot dive in the world. Sandpaper rough on the top and silky smooth on the bottom 
the stingrays can be safely stroked and fed here. Although they do possess a defensive spine at the base of their tail, they are not aggressive and they pose no threat to humans. An unusual fact at Stingray City is that almost all of the rays regularly encountered there are females, and many experts believe it serves as a nursery with males residing on the outer edge of the reef near the drop-off. Another interesting and little known fact is that stingrays are closely related to sharks. Unlike other fish we see on the reef, sharks and rays have skeleton made of soft, flexible cartilage, not bone. Instead of scales, sharks and rays both have tiny little teeth called denticles embedded in their skin. This is why the stingrays at Stingray City feel rough. Like sharks, stingrays have five pairs of gill slits on the underside of their flat, dislike body and a pair of round spiracles behind their eyes. The spiracles allow the rays to pump water through their gills, even when they're laying in the sand. Large tarpon, a fish well known to sport fishermen as a prize game fish, are regularly seen at dive sites such as Bonnie's Arch and Tarpon Alley. These big silvery fish often appear lethargic during the day, but become aggressive hunters at night preying on small fish such as silversides and herrings. Another common inhabitant of the reef is the ominous looking moray eel. Although the green moray may look threatening with its sharp teeth and its habit of continually opening and closing its mouth, it really doesn't deserve its reputation as an aggressive sea monster. In truth, the moray must constantly open and close its mouth in order to pump water through its gills. Likewise, the menacing looking barracuda is merely breathing when he opens and closes his mouth. He's not trying to threaten anyone. But barracudas are curious creatures and they'll often hang around divers and snorkelers for several minutes. Not only is the marine life in the Cayman Islands considered top notch, the dive operators who offer instruction and boat trips are often regarded as the best in the world. Adhering closely to safety requirements and recognized teaching standards, members of the Cayman Islands Water Sports Operators Association keep scuba diving and snorkeling just as safe as it is fun. If the spectacular sights of the reef have left you yearning to explore more, you can experience the ultimate deep dive to 800 feet on Cayman's sheer wall with the Atlantis Deep Research Submersible. Offering a dive available nowhere else in the world, Atlantis uses two Perry submersibles, which were originally built and used for petroleum exploration in the North Sea. The deep submarines, which carry only two passengers at a time, have been in operation in Grand Cayman since 1985. Each submersible is 20 feet in length with a cabin that's about eight feet wide. Descent is at a rate of 60 feet per minute, requiring only 16 minutes to reach a depth of 800 feet. Like the other Atlantis submarines, internal pressure is maintained at one atmosphere or sea level, so no decompression or special training is required of passengers. Seated in front of a massive 36-inch convex viewing port at the front of the sub, the two guests have a panoramic view of the underwater topography as they descend and explore. While making the controlled descent to a depth of 800 feet, the various life zones and geological formations are described by the pilot. At a depth of about 300 feet, few of the hard corals that comprise the shallow reef are still present, but a variety of sponges proliferate, and thus this region is known as the sponge belt. As the descent continues, gorgonians, such as sea fans and sea whips, become abundant, as well as a variety of black corals, ranging from whip-like to tree-like forms. As the sub approaches a depth of 700 feet, the first haystacks appear. These enormous blocks of limestone are possibly formed as sections of the wall cleave off and fall away. In this abyssal zone, a number of strange organisms dwell, including the rare stalked crinoid, 
one of the few living representatives of a group of animals known primarily from their fossil record, the three-foot-tall stork crinoid clings to outcrops and haystacks, using its feathery arms to capture plankton and guide the food into its centralized mouth. After reaching maximum depth, the sub begins a leisurely 45 minute ascent, which allows for close scrutiny of the deep reef. At a depth of 800 feet, the sub pauses to inspect the wreck of the Kirk Pride, a cargo ship that sank outside Georgetown Harbor during a winter storm in 1976. The wreck, which had been a local mystery for almost 10 years, was discovered in 1985 the wreck not only represents an exciting moment in maritime history, but is also valued by marine biologists as a gauge of marine growth on the deep reef, because the date of its demise is known. Back on the sunny surface, the hatch is opened and the deep sea explorers return to a more familiar world. Fun in the Cayman Islands is not limited to the sights under the sea. Grand Cayman is also home to the world's only turtle farm, where thousands of sea turtles, from palm-sized hatchlings to 600-pound breeders, can be seen. The Cayman Turtle Farm is renowned for its research, its hatch and release program, and its work with other endangered turtle species like the Kemp's Ridley. A trip to hell is always fun. The chance to mail postcards with a hand-stamped postmark from hell is irresistible to most visitors. A scenic drive out to the east end of the islands calls for a stop at the blowholes. Over the millennia, the constant surf action has eroded tunnels into the ancient shoreline rock that we call Ironshore. As large swells approach, blasts of seawater are forced upwards through the rock, producing an exciting plume of spray. While touring the island, a stop at the Queen Elizabeth Botanic Gardens is a must. Here, numerous indigenous trees and plants are displayed in a natural setting. Several of Cayman's unique animals are here too, including the rare blue iguana. The history and culture of the Cayman Islands is beautifully represented at the Cayman Islands National Museum on the waterfront, a building which itself is a historical monument. Although there are many fascinating and exciting sights to see in the Cayman Islands, Perhaps the most popular is the sun as it sets on the horizon beyond Seven Mile Beach. Today, just as when Columbus first set foot on these islands hundreds of years ago, the Cayman Islands are a natural paradise, both above and below the surface of the tranquil blue Caribbean. For more information on the Atlantis submarine in Grand Cayman and its other locations around the world, call 1-800-887-8571 in the United States or 1-809-949-7700 in the Cayman Islands. Or write PO Box 1043, Georgetown, Grand Cayman, British West Indies. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you aboard an Atlantis submarine again.